Okay. Um, well, just like always, uh, after digesting the tape uh, of Utah, um, you know, there's a lot to like, obviously, when you, you win a game. Offensively, I did think the first drive, watching the execution there, and to be able to get seven points to open the game was huge, get our fan base into the thing, which was awesome all night. Um, even then, you know, Silas Bolton, third and ten, we throw it underneath the ball, he breaks the tackle to extend the drive, we go and finish the thing. Damian had a great run at the end of it. So to, to start the game offensively, I thought it was huge. Throughout the night, found ways to get explosive in the pass game. Again, Silas, but you know, just Irish making some plays, DJ making some good throws. I thought that was important in the in the game. I mean, Silas obviously, you know, the fourth and one play goes goes to the house. He had others that were backed up. We throw the deep ball to him. He makes this fantastic catch, um, and that's a good defense. Um, and it's not just the players; they got good players in a scheme that is tough to recognize and attack. Um, I do think on the offensive end, we wanted to be able to finish better. Uh, in the fourth quarter, we got we got a good lead, and I think we actually had one first down and four drives in the fourth quarter. We want to improve on that. Talked about it as a team and coaches. Defensively, a lot to like. I mean, they flew around, uh, made it challenging, took away the run game for the most part, which we had to do. Those guys want to run the ball, make it physical. I did think the the series where we had some adversity, they got you know down there first and goal for a couple different reasons, and they go backwards and get got the pick. That was huge. Easton is playing at a high level. Um, talked about it, but that showed up a ton on tape, his production. Joe Golden taking on double teams, really the whole front, but Golden taking on double teams, making it physical. Sione Lolohea, awesome throughout the night. Chatfield again, uh, getting the quarterback down. So there's a lot there. And I thought the response out of the defense with the previous week, come in and put a, a great performance that way. It was awesome to see. Special teams, I did think, you know, there wasn't a ton there on either side. I think our protection was solid for our, our punt, and we punted more than we wanted. Um, again, going against the defense makes it hard, but our protection was solid. We do want to get a little bit more out of the punt coverage and distance there, but protection-wise, we liked that. I did think their punter showed up, and he was good. We knew that coming in. The guy was a good punter, really only gave us one chance on a return. Um, and so uh, we don't keep moving on the, on the special teams in. I think we've got a chance to, to continue to impact the game. Not looking just only at our players on tape, looking at myself on tape, you know, in regards to how we signal plays at the, uh, the end, communicate. Um, got to do things better there. So for those I offended with that, I apologize. I won't be using that signal again. Uh, in regards to the targeting, um, Looked at you know both calls against Calvin and James, and I think they're you know, correct calls. So those guys will be sitting in the first half uh, down at down at Cal. I think the other thing that separated the game was the fourth downs for both sides. They were I think one of four on fourth down. We were effective on fourth down, and that does change the games when you get people off the field or extend drives. Fourth down was huge, and so transferring forward, we got a. Big time challenge this weekend. Uh, go back on the road. Uh, that program down at Cal has played us tough. You look at the battles throughout the last, I don't know, three, four years, that type of thing. Got a bunch of respect for Justin Wilcox. Uh, know him well. Uh, always plays stout defense. They got a good running back that's a carrying the ball, and that'll, that'll be a challenge down there. Um, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Aiden Childs. Um, you, you, Got one series on on Friday. Is that something you think you might be looking at for future games? The maybe a one or two series thing as a change up, and then two. When do you decide about his red shirt? Yep, it's kind of all all inclusive. Um, it's yet to be determined, uh, or this early in the week. Uh, I know that the more opportunities he gets, he's only going to get better. He's got a, a chance to be a really really good player. We want to continue to develop that. Um, but decisions on you know this weekend red shirting to be determined. So have you had have you guys talked at all you and Aiden and his parents at all about about Rich because he's down to one one yep, game. Yep, yep. We uh, we've tried to well definitely talk with Aiden each week, kind of where it was at. Played in the early couple of games, a couple different reasons on the San Diego State Washington State, and felt like wanted to force the issue this last weekend. And like I say, we'll continue to talk this week. We'll see how this plan uh, comes together for for this weekend. Two uh, redshirt freshmen on defense made their kind of broke out a little bit on Friday. Melvin Jordan and Noble Thomas. Just 
kind of what did you, what was the thinking giving them more, more time and what did you think of their performance and, and moving forward? Yeah, Noble had been battling some injury early on. Um, he finally got himself kind of up to full speed. He's got some versatility. He played some nickel, actually played a, a piece of a corner and, and did some good things, challenging, tackling. Um, obviously, when Calvin goes down, Melvin steps in and, and did some solid things. We want to have multiple guys to be able to put out there. And I think we've got that in the secondary. And then obviously with the, the way Melvin played, he continues to earn some more time. I guess the obvious question then regarding Melvin is without Hart in the first half, is he a candidate to, to start? On, on oh, definitely a candidate. We'll, we'll see how this work uh, week of practice goes. Because you got some options with John Miller uh, also can do some things. And you got Easton next to him. So uh, we want, like I say, whoever starts, we want to be able to put multiple guys in the game. Coach, how much of an impact do you think not having Calvin and Rawls out in that first half will be against a, a team that Cal that is not one to be underestimated, especially this season? Yeah, especially the way they can run the ball, that back is good. So you want to have your old arsenal defensively. And so, yeah, it'll impact some things. But again, we got some depth at those two positions. Um, just like this physical game, you got some guys that are banged up. You need the next guy up and ready to roll. And so um, we're going to have to play it that way. Looking at the numbers and what Cal does, they seem very similar offensively to what you guys do offensively. A very strong run game with a very complimentary passing game. Does it make it more challenging facing a team that's very similar to yourself, or does it make it easier because you kind of know what to look out for, especially on the defensive side? Yeah, I, I see it as a challenge with the balance that they uh, create. Run game especially, it includes the quarterback, and that's always challenging. you got a big-time receiver. I mean, Jeremiah Hunter's making a bunch of plays for him, and so you got to know where he's at at all times. I see it as a real challenge. One of the things that I noticed from this past weekend's game was the penalties. I think it was 11 penalties for 100 yards, a lot of mistakes you guys were able to overcome that. Is that something you talked with your team either today and just kind of touched on making sure you guys clean that up, especially as you move forward in Pac-12 play? Um, we touched on it a while ago because I think it was the opener. We had a yeah. bunch of bunch of penalties. Again, we're not trying to just play the game penalty free. We want to be smart. We're always about the penalties that are pre-snap. We had a couple of those offensively. We did intentionally take a couple, delay a game, so that added got us in the double digits. Um, so we're aware of it and want to play clean football, especially uh, before the snap or after it. What's DJ's confidence been this early on? I know obviously he had a couple weeks struggling. Last Friday was probably his best game in a, in a couple weeks. What's, what's he feeling like now getting his first win in Pac-12 play and kind of moving on through this season? Yep, I think he's uh, playing with confidence. I think he's a, a veteran that is aware that this is not a game of perfect. Um, I think – it means a ton to his approach, even in the games, not getting too high, too low. And he did. He played really effective on Friday, and we're going to need it again this weekend. How does this defense compare to um, Justin's defenses in the past, and, and what are they doing well this year? Yeah, similar in regards to sound. They don't you know, beat themselves. They challenge you. Um, physical at the defensive line, the technique they use, make it hard on the old line to get a lot of movement going. Uh, defend you on the back end with the mix of coverages that they know inside and out and got some guys that, you know, can take take a ton of grass, corner safety, track the ball, get to distances. So that's all similar, and they've been good at doing this scheme for a long time. And specifically, you, I know you've touched on Ott a couple of times. What do you guys think you need to do well to, uh, to you know, slow him down? On yeah, uh, you can't just – single tackles is going to be tough. You need to get a bunch of guys to the ball. This guy is physical. He can make you miss. He can go to the house. If he gets a crease, uh, he's not going to go down easy. And so it can't just leave a solo out there. we got to get a bunch of guys to the ball. How is, uh, given that Ott and Martinez are both same class, how, how are they different? Um, you know, I can't speak deeply on, on Ott. I mean, I'm watching them on tape. They're similar in guys making, making guys miss. Um, it's funny, we had Odd on a recruiting trip here. We were trying to track him down recruiting even that year. Um, he's a good player that's physical. Obviously, we think really highly of uh, uh, Damian and, and his capabilities. When you play a game like, like Cal, you've played top 25 teams back-to-back. -back. I know you guys try to keep it level and all that, but 
When, when do you start to notice if your team is maybe not quite as focused as you'd like? And what do you, what do, you do if you do see that? Right. You know, I think you can notice sometimes, maybe if we're in practice, the detail of, you know, like we're talking about the snap count, um, we're in the wrong formation, um, we're misfit in a run that we shouldn't, you know, a couple of those things could show up and then you got your eyes on, on that kind of thing. Um, I have not seen it out of, the, out of this team. I think, again, this weekly approach, uh, this much of the season, five games, you don't know for certain who's really good, who's not. You can't just chase this, oh, these guys are good, so we're going to really be focused in this. These guys aren't as good, we're not going to be as the focused. Um, each week, especially on the road, they're going to need our A game. Maybe this stat only interests me, but only Penn State has run more plays than Cal and FBS. Do they, I mean, are they hyper? They can go fast. They They're, must go fast yep. they run as many plays. They, they, they can go fast. They're running the ball, so, you know, positive yards, a lot of first downs. Um, there's no question. And, and that's why they can be effective. Uh, moving the ball, their yardage is what it is. I think if you look at them, they've got a couple of games where if they do a little bit better in the red zone, they're, they're – I don't know about undefeated, but they're sitting probably 4-1 and one like us. Coach, I know you've had a lot of great defenses under your helm. How would you describe this year's defense through five games, and where do you think they rank among some of the defenses that you've coached in the last couple of years with this Beaver organization? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, right now after five, I think we've got a chance to be really good. It's about sustaining it week in and week out. Again, we're not even at the halfway point. I do think uh, – we're at depth, the defensive line is as good as we've had the last couple of years with the effort they're playing with. Um, so each, each of them are different. I think, again, that staff on the defensive side does an awesome job, a mantra of challenging and competing and the mentality they play with. That's pretty similar to what we've had the last couple of years. You know, I asked Easton after the win against Utah, did they feel like this was a must-win game? And he really was adamant that he felt like they dropped one against Washington State and that they were going to make sure that – they weren't going to do that again. Do you feel like, again, that you kind of vibe with that mentality that from now on there's no more drops in this season for you guys? You have to bring your A game every single time and get a win no matter what. Yeah, you, you do. You want to bring your A game. I think they that side of the ball has got a, a ton of pride. And after the first half up there in Pullman, it wasn't very good. And so the response and the second half played a little bit better, but definitely at home. And they want to play really well each week and, and do their – they're part of things helping us helping us win. I want to ask a couple about the the fourth down uh, play to Silas. Um, how does that play evolve? Have you been working on that, or is that something you 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 saw Utah and thought it might be a, a good time to work on something like that? That was implemented um, th that week, so that wasn't something we'd been you know in the arsenal, you know, practiced a ton. Um, it wasn't specific maybe just to Utah. I think people know on fourth and inches, a lot of people want to run the quarterback sneak, and they're going to, it, that's a tough play to defend. You're going to try to defend it. You're going to squeeze everybody in there. And we felt like we had a great chance for an explosive play against a good defense of running it in that exact scenario. Why, why, is, why is Silas the guy getting the ball on that? Is how, do you, how do you decide who's going to be? Um, yeah, yeah, you know, one is the speed he's got to get to the edge. Um, we put in a heavier personnel with, you know, the tight end plays, the single receiver in it. We tuck the, uh, you know, the, Damien, the back behind him, making it look like we're going to push him. Um, so it just fit the personnel group to have him back there. And then i I'm just curious, I mean, you, you threw on fourth and one up at Washington State. I mean, this wasn't exactly, you know, a, a routine play that you ran here. Is some of the thinking on, on this, we're just a little crazy on this stuff, and you guys got to be ready for it. And, and, the, and because it might open up that, you know, that obvious play where you quarterback sneak, they got to be on, on guard for it. Yeah, I, you know, I wouldn't describe it as crazy. We are going to be strategically aggressive. And I, going into that game, as good as Utah is on defense, you're finding ways to be explosive. Sometimes your best chance or a good chance of being explosive is those tight fourth and ones. It's similar. Similar to Pullman, not to the extreme of, you know, fourth and an inch, and we're pitching the ball backwards seven yards. Um, but willing to strategically be aggressive, we're, we're going to be about that. The Research Stadium and the crowd, there was a sequence in the first half, I believe, where they took a couple of false starts in a row deep in their own territory. Do you, do you credit Research Stadium and the environment for that? And how do you feel like 
this new stadium is playing in terms of, of, of the noise? Yeah, I do credit the, uh, the fan base, uh, Beaver Nation, for the, the noise, the havoc. Again, it's tough to go on the road in a place like that, communicate, and, you know, false starts are huge for, you know, pushing an offense uh, backwards. So I give them 100% of that credit. I do think we got one of the best game day atmospheres going in the country. I mean, after experiencing that Friday night, students are back. And so, yeah, we got a, a big game this weekend and be anxious to get back to, to Reeser the following week. On the fourth down play, or any <clears throat> uh, pseudo trick play, do you teach selling it? Do you tell the guys, you know, to really act? Make it, make them believe they're gonna, you're going to do one thing before you do the other. Yeah, you, yes, that's part of it. And so even the setup and the splits of the old line, we're just selling like we're running quarterback sneak, you know, getting to the line of scrimmage, but not too quickly because we want that defense to dig in. There's some, some detail to selling one thing for you know, the other to work. And despite the fact that Utah clearly was more of a run-oriented team, obviously, than, than Washington State, how did you feel about how your secondary – kind of learn from or grew from any of the mistakes they may have made against Washington State? Yeah, you're hoping they're learning growing each week, and I think they, they did. Sometimes it's not all just the schematics of learning. It's your response to, you know, being able to play with some disappointment, right? We're not playing great with the Cougs and all of this and be able to respond back, um, know that each week's new and the new challenge is coming. And so I did feel like the response, not just the secondary, as the group, um, was good. Thanks.